Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be solving problem 1.6 from Griffith's Introduction to Electrodynamics. It asks us to prove that A cross B cross C plus B cross C cross A plus C cross A cross B equals the zero vector. So in order to prove that this expression in fact equals a zero vector, we need to use the so-called BAC minus CAB rule that we proved was true in the previous video. Um, so this first term here, we can explicitly write out as the form of the BAC minus CAB rule that we're given. So I'll do that first. So we can write A cross B cross C as B times A dot C minus C times A dot B. Okay, and I'll put this in the same square brackets. Now this next one, even though it's it's kind of using the same format but with the vectors in a different order so because the order is different in this cross product it's not a cross b cross c anymore it's b cross c cross a we are still using the bac minus cab rule it's just it will read in a slightly different order so this in fact gives c times B dot A minus A times B dot C. If you want to pause the video and just check for yourself that this is correct. So now there's just the third triple cross product to deal with which is C cross A cross B. Again, we're using the BAC minus CAB rule with the order very carefully changed. So we can write this as A times C dot B minus B times C dot A. So now we just need to check that this full expression is equal to zero. And this is quite straightforward if we just remember that A dot B representing any two vectors is the same as B dot A. Also representing any two vectors. So taking this into account, we can just see if any terms cancel. So we've got a plus B times A dot C here. And we've got a minus B times C dot A there. So this C dot A, we can just write as A dot C. And then we have these two terms cancelling out. So we have the first and the last term cancelling out. We have a minus C times A dot B here and a plus C times B dot A here. As we've written here, these two dot products are exactly the same. So these two terms also cancel out. And then finally, we have a minus A times B dot C here and a plus A times C dot B here. So these terms also cancel out. So the expression does in fact equal the zero vector. Now we can move on to the second part of this question, which says, under what conditions does A cross B cross C equal A cross B cross C? So now we're on to the second part of the problem. Under what conditions does this statement hold? Well, the left-hand side is very familiar, so we can write this out as 
the BAC minus CAB rule. So I'll do that now. It's very much equal to this. Now, in order to deal with the right hand side, um, there's a special rule that we need to be aware of for the for cross products and vectors in general, where let's say two vectors D and E. So we have D and E. Well, the cross product of D and E is minus the cross product of E and D. So the order really matters when you're dealing with cross products. So taking this into account, we can actually write the cross product of A cross B and C as minus C cross with A cross B. Now this is just treating C as one vector and A cross B as one vector because as we know cross products give you a vector as the output. So now the next step is to use this rule at the top again with um, paying close attention to the order of the vectors. So we can write this as a times minus C dot B minus B times minus C dot A. So now, of course, this right hand side can be simplified to minus a times c dot b plus b times c dot a. And remember, we're looking for the conditions under which this expression equals this expression. And if we look at this term, b times a dot c, and remembering that the order does not matter for dot products, we can see that this term and this term are exactly the same. So we can subtract that from both sides, and then we end up with the more the much more simple C times A dot B equals A times C dot B. So what we've done here is reduce this statement at the top to this statement at the bottom. So if we find the conditions under which this statement holds, we will therefore find the conditions under which this statement holds. So firstly, um, we're going to deal with one of these conditions. So let's suppose that the vectors a and c, so both of the vectors a and c, are both perpendicular, this is a symbol for perpendicular, to the vector b. So that would mean that the dot product of a and b is 0, and the dot product of um, c and b would be zero. And we can, if you, if this wasn't obvious already, we can think about it in terms of the definition of the dot product, where a and a dot b is equal to the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b times cos of the angle between them. 
and when this angle between them is 90 degrees, then the value of this is zero because cos of 90 degrees is zero. So bearing this in mind, if we've got a dot b equals zero and c dot b equals zero, we have a situation where the left hand side is equal to zero and the right hand side is equal to zero. So when both a and c are perpendicular to b, this is one of the conditions under which this statement holds. So now let's discuss another set of conditions in which this statement might hold. So we talked about the definition of the dot product before. So let's just write this out as if in full. So we have C times the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times cos of theta 1, where I've defined theta 1 as the angle between A and B. Okay, and then we have the right hand side, which is A times magnitude of C magnitude of b times cos of theta 2, where I've defined theta 2 as the angle between c and b. So we want this equation to hold, and as you can see there's a lot of variables now, but if we made it such that theta 1 is equal to theta 2, And we could just call that a common angle theta. Okay. So in order for this to hold, this would require the vectors A and C to be parallel. Because only if A and C were parallel would they have the same angle between them and B. Therefore, theta 1 would equal theta 2. So we could just extend the vector C, for example, here. Therefore, we'd have theta 1 being equal to theta 2. So if we do, in fact, have that the vector C is parallel to the vector A, we can actually write C equals a constant lambda times the vector A. And let's see what this does to our expression here. So the left hand side becomes lambda a times the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b times cos theta, where we're now just writing theta 1 and theta 2 as a common angle theta. And this is equal to a times the magnitude of lambda a times the magnitude of b times cos theta. And now simply enough we can take the constant out of this magnitude symbol and then we have lambda a times the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b cos theta and now this left hand side is exactly the same as the right hand side so we have another condition under which this statement is true and that condition is that the vectors a and c are parallel so now we've finished the second part of the question 1.6 and we found the conditions under which this equation holds. And those conditions are if both the vectors a and c are perpendicular to b, or if the vectors a and c are parallel. So thanks for watching the video and subscribe if you want to watch more videos like this one.